Hello and welcome back to Statistic TV. It's your boy D- DJ T Sal, and today we're back for another episode of the Statistic Pod. This is episode six, and I'm going to be talking about Kendrick Lamar's album Good Kid, Mad City, and why you should be listening to it in reverse order. This is a theory that I've been working on for quite a while, and I've literally did. did I stumbled upon this theory like I would say sometime six months ago. Unimportant. It's more important to talk about how I came to this theory when the song Real. Um, what was playing and then you listen to Kendrick um, well whoever was listening to the tape they uh, they didn't stop it they rewind it this is where the idea actually came from that this album probably should be listened to in re- in reverse in fact this is the only clue in the in the entire album Kendrick Lamar actually brought um, actually announced in December 2017 that the whole damn album is supposed to be listened to in reverse unlike Good Kid Man City damn actually had a lot of hints leaving behind to suggest that that album should be listened to in reverse you had Ya which had the instrumentation was done in reverse then you had loyalty which a sample from from 24k magic by bruno mars was sampled from and it was chopped and screwed in reverse and then you also had fear which kendrick and the instrumentation is in reverse as well and kendrick was also speaking in reverse and then you had on Duckworth where kid capri himself said we're gonna put it in reverse so if you didn't have enough clues as to whether you should listen to the album in reverse that album was littered with clues is what i'm trying to say however on this album there is no such clue there is actually no not even any indication but do hear me out do listen out for this theory because it could actually mean something <laughs> do hear me out um i do think that there is a really good narrative that's been crafted when you do listen to it in reverse so um, yeah let's see where we're gonna go from this before i actually start the review i'm gonna show you where this this theory actually falls on his head immediately the theory falls on his head um not only does it have some narrative issues when you do listen to the album which i will tackle as i go on but the album doesn't actually stop on real it stops on compton and this is when Kendrick Lamar re- reveals himself to be King Kendrick Lamar. So the story in Good Kid Massey was to actually show his journey to becoming a, a king, to self actualization, to him getting to the moment that he is now where he feels like he is a king. That was the journey in Good Kid Massey. So now that he's a king, he's ready to go on on to Bimba Butterfly. It was actually a very beautiful segue once we that we have a track on on to Bimba Butterfly called King Kunta. So this was actually a very good transition and we understand in context what that track actually stands for now there is something that kendrick does do and i must mention out kendrick does do this a lot in which he starts off his his albums both albums good kid massey and to pimper butterfly all start on the third track with the first two tracks serving as kind of interludes or kind of saying the groundwork for what's going to happen on the album and the topics that they're going to talk about on the album in Good Kid Massey, we have Shireen, um, aka Master Splinter's daughter, and also we have B Word, Don't Kill My Vibe. These two says the narrative. And the reason why I say that the story doesn't start until um, the art of peer pressure is because Kendrick Lamar actually does say, everybody, everybody, um, gather around to listen to, um, to the story that Kendrick Lamar is going to tell you about the story in Rosecrans. You get the idea. So, with him saying this, this was him signaling onto the audience onto us listeners that this is when good kid massey actually starts this this is the evolution of kendrick lamar basically now he does actually apply this onto bim butterfly he starts off with um wesley's theory and then it for free for free or of course talks about uncle sam and and basically how kendrick is going to be wrestling with choosing between uncle sam and and choosing between himself and then you have wesley's fury which uh kind of which kind of gives you an overall narrative context into what into 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 topics is going to be talking about within the album so with those two tracks setting up the context for what's going to be discussed on the album we now have king kunta which enters the scene and the reason why i say that the album starts here is because that's when kendrick actually starts his his spoken poem you never hear that on on um for free and you never hear that on wesley's fury so if you so with you hearing it now and you and you're hearing it from king kunta onto mortal man that gives you the idea that the album starts there and finishes on mortal man so with that idea in mind we now see that 
Compton is not necessarily part of Good Kid Man City. If you are following my drift, Compton is not necessarily part of Good Kid Man City, but it kind of bridges both albums together. It kind of gives you an idea of the journey that Kendrick Lamar has been through on Good Kid Man City and now he is this person because of that journey and because of course, of course on real the tape actually stopped which is also an, 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 an indication of that so with that in mind we now can use Compton to now go segue and bridge into To Pimp a Butterfly that's the idea I've got and also another thing that actually solidifies this idea is uh, I believe it's Wesley's theory where Dre appears again and says you wanted a you wanted this life it's it's harder to keep it so i think that's what it says i'm paraphrasing horribly here but um those two things are something to keep in mind so i only gave you that explanation to actually show you that compton is not actually throwing a spanner into the work of my theory it, because some of you might think that but it's actually not it's actually not even part of, or part of the theory in fact it actually aids the theory a lot because like i said if it acts as a bridge between to pimp a, a, a butterfly and good kid my city it also acts as, like a bridge into this alternate universe that i'm creating which you're gonna see the narrative in which i'm going to be talking about on this theory so without further ado let's actually dive into the theory it starts off in compton and we know that kendry lamar is now the king and he talks about what he's going to do and what he sets out to do but before that we had the track real which goes through his um his actualization his moment in which he he became assured of himself coming from this narrative we are coming from the fact that he's actually a king that he's actually that he has actually made all the growth that he's needed to grow and he is now sitting back and reflecting on everything is done uh, on everything is achieved we also get to hear vo a voice note from his parents and basically this is very encouraging telling him to take his music things very seriously and in this idea in this in this kind of autumn universe you get the idea that he's actually a more complete individual he is a, an individual who has everything set together, right? Then, of course, the way that the album ends, the track stops there and then it rewinds. In a way, he's going back in time. He's kind of reflecting on the things that, he, uh, that, that has happened to him. Now, tragedy actually happens on Sing For Me. Sing For Me is actually a track um, in which Kendrick Lamar actually speaks from, from, from the perspective of his brother who was shot dead and also from the perspective of of brenda's friend i believe on the track who he made a song about in brenda got a baby on section 80 i believe i believe he's speaking from 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 the perspective of his friend which shows you the environment that he's growing up in this was the purpose of the track being made as we were hearing sing for me we heard gunshots and then he goes on to dying of thirst in which he talks about his brother being killed this is tragedy in k dot's life or kendrick's life in the in this case so what has actually happened is now that his brother is, is killed he's met by the woman who is who is saying that these people that they're dying of thirst if you're looking if you're thinking about the narrative that we're creating here again he has he, he has he's basically a king he has given you the he, he has given you the, the environment that he's grown out of he is also um in sync for me and also real it kind of gives you that idea that he really really struggled to get to where he is and now he lost his brother so with that narrative what actually happens is he is now faced with a choice whether to accept jesus because that's what the woman had them do they had, she had them pray in order to like try and can't calm them down and bring them into kind of reality and make them think twice about what they're about to do or what whatever choice they're about to make next so with this happening kendrick actually have a choice he has a choice whether to um whether to actually accept jesus in into his life or to continue on with his life and do what his heart would desire him to do which is to take revenge funny enough then the next track after this is actually swimming pools drink which on the flip side of this it was actually a song denouncing drinking or saying that that that's not the way to go because you'll be addicted uh, that there is no life at the end of the bottle etc but with this context in mind with what kendrick has gone through if he's choosing the bottle the idea that we are getting now is he has actually rejected the call that he has had to turn his life to, his life to christ which on the normal running of this album he did turn his life to christ and then real followed on this version though 
if he's turning to drink he's talking about he is um he's now turning to drink he is now seeing his life in a bottle so what's happening here is kendrick is actually turning into his lust and this is also the first time that we've that we've heard shireen in in the mix this is the first time that we've that shireen comes into the picture but she is more of a sex object here she is more of someone that kendrick fantasizes about now this is very important though because the end of this track this is where you kind of face the first kind of um, narrative problem that we have here because on the ending of this album you kind of hear that kendrick's um, brother has been killed here however like i said this is like i said in this alternate universe it, it now serves as as a bridge in which he is now remembering what's actually happened in, in his life he is now living that moment again where where he, he found out that that they shot his brother and it segues on to on to mad city which in which mad city actually talks about the environment that they live at pretty much kind of cements in stone what they are about to do or the route that they're about to take because we now get the idea that, that the mad city is now crowding around kendrick especially when he now reveals on 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 Massey, where he now reveals that he shot someone at 16. now based on what he's gone through and based on him losing his brother and based on him rejecting the call that he had to um for jesus etc based on all those things i would believe that he would retaliate because he has chosen to drink he has also chosen to act on his lust as well as on this case i really believe he has chosen to kill the people that that uh that came after him which is what massey kind of serves like that that environment has has engulfed him to make the decision to take to take revenge rather than actually grow out of that we got good kid um which kind of adds to this point in which he is slowly surrendering into his vices and that's what good kid kind of represents now poetic justice actually comes as serves as a track in this narrative in this context of, of this album in which uh you get the idea that he's battling between love and lust the reason why i say he's battling between love and lust is because on this on this track we were introduced to shireen in a kind of a lustful light where he was he was drinking um, on swimming pools and now on this one we get a different feel we get a different idea um that kendrick might have towards the person he's fantasizing about which is shireen However, on the next track, Kendrick kind of reveals that he actually has sex with, with Shireen, which kind of solidifies that he's actually chosen the lost route with Shireen. Um, and pretty much, he now shows that he's now submitting into the life of, uh, of sex and money, um, in which he also turns around to talk about him and his friends going out and um, fantasizing about, what, about doing what rappers do, uh, which is basically uh getting a lot of money um that that's what his uh him and his homies are basically doing so with that na- with that narrative in mind we can see a slow digression of kendra's character here and that's the main point of this theory um you may have noticed the, inconsi- the inconsistencies already especially with the, with the way that it segues from a swimming pools onto man city even though narratively it makes sense it's still like i said it's like going into a loop but like i try to explain away the loop um the loop kind of suggests that he is recounting the event and he's he's more in britain rage into taking revenge but again because of the way that the track is set up you may not get this thought immediately and you may not even be thinking that you 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 may be thinking oh this theory is falling apart but uh rest assured i'm gonna show you that it's not anyway moving from money trees after he has he has shown that he, what he wants to achieve with him and his friends that he that um that he wants to get a lot of money he has sex with shireen and also it must also be noted here that um there is a voice note that was left to his mom and the main point of this track actually is to show how is how is the is his choices are actually having a toll on his parents life this was a very good parallel with Dam and good kid massey in which we're gonna do in uh, in another video and how this work in theory is actually um serving as good parallels and kind of serving as good context for Dam. anyway but moving on we're getting the idea that his parents are getting more and more aggravated with his choices so in the earlier narrative from real we had the idea that uh, that his parents were very supportive of him 
but now we get the idea that they're slowly and slowly getting more and more frustrated with him because of the way that he's turning out and ignoring the advices that they're giving him the auto peer pressure is where i guess again the theory, the theory kind of falls on his head because he's because he's now saying everybody over a guy around listen to a story of kendrick lamar that falls in ghost crimes but even with that being said i still i still think that this serves as a as, as a good narrative because if this is the story of kendrick lamar go um from rosecrans it kind of suggests that he's actually turning out to be like his comrades his friends like uh, the people that he's grown up with in this massy he's, he's turning out to be just like them um the story that that, that is being told in the art of paper show is where it's where him and, 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 and his friends went out gang is it, can i say gang banging can i say robbery i'm they basically went out on a on a night of antics they were also drinking they were also smoking they were doing the things that you know young people do in in that city so they were living for their vices basically and they also nearly got arrested this night but they survived it's also it's very important important to note narratively that this actually flows in with the with the idea because now we see, we see we're now seeing the full digression of of kendrick lamar we're now seeing him actually becoming a lot more of a villain kind of a way he's now becoming he hasn't actually learned anything <sighs> okay so back backstreet freestyle actually now serves as a bagger dojo track which shows kendrick actually embraced his newfound life his newfound ego it shows kendrick actually embracing that and actually living for that that's mainly the that's mainly the objective of this track is not really anything to go back in um to really dissect too much into we get the first kind of interest in introspection from kendrick lamar when on um b don't b word don't kill my vibe where he actually says he is a sinner and he's probably gonna sin again this on the original didn't make sense because we don't know what he's done we don't know exactly how this serves into the narrative so the track se- segues from backstreet free- freestyle onto b word don't kill my vibe based on the context of the based on the context of the of the album so far this track makes sense it all also shows a, uh, that kendrick is now actually possibly receiving another call from his conscience urging him to rethink his his choices basically and b word don't kill my vibe kind of makes sense narratively because he he has been a sinner he has chosen the life of vices he has actually rejected christ's call on um sing about me and dying of thirst he chooses to retaliate against the people that killed his brother and or uh, again goes off with his loss with shireen and goes off with his loss with the drinking and went out robbery and, and doing all those things in the art of peer pressure with all these things compounded it makes sense why his conscience is actually make him feel like he's a sinner or why he's feeling like such on this track as well he mentions how much of of a mistake he has made which is probably based on his choices by the way ignore the skit at the end of this track because most likely that can be skit explained away as well you can just basically say yeah yeah they done the freestyle when you know it's not i don't think it served anything narratively it was just braggadocio so you can pretty much ignore that for this theory anyway moving on to shireen he kind of paints shireen aka mr splinter's daughter <laughs> which if you know the, te- the teenage mutant ninja ni- ni- turtles you will know that this is talking about hood rats wow anyway the point is he kind of paints shireen in a in a um, in a very negative light it, um it kind of shows you that the person that was going through his head or um when he got sh- when his brother got shot he just wanted to he wanted to deal with it in so many ways and shireen came to mind it's kind of the same narrative that 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 was served when you listen to his album in the normal order because again shireen was the reason why they went out doing what they were doing he was trying to get a um get his knot in you know get his uh his load in <clears throat> he was trying basically he was yeah okay i'm not gonna he was basically trying you get the idea so after he's done what he's done um uh is his decisions to go see shireen his decisions to do all these things led to his brother dying on an arm when you listen to his track normally and it's led to his growth after that so he learned that lost wasn't the way to go but on this 
on this it kind of serves as a narrative that in which he let his loss be fulfilled again i know that there's there are some narrative problems here um however i believe that the art of peer pressure kind of still fixes that another point to note is when this track actually ends uh, with the skit it shows his parents growing more and more frustrated with him especially with with the father telling the mother to go away especially etc we don't really know how far that went and then if we segue from here onto damn duckworth and listen to that backwards you can you can kind of get the idea of how this person is going down a very dark path and it kind of explains it more which is why i'm gonna do another video to kind of show you the parallels between this theory and damn so thank you so much for for tuning on to this uh, episode of statistics the statistic pod i'm curious to know your thoughts in the comment section below did you like it did you love it make sure you share this content on your socials don't forget to like share and subscribe don't forget to press all on the notifications so that you can receive our videos as we upload and i'll see you on the next one thanks for watching